morning. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda and I do work horses with Jim. Um, today I was going to just show you uh, what's going on here at the farm as I start the day. I'm thinking of making him an apple pie for, and I thought I'd show you as I walk by the apple tree. We've got lots of apples. I'm going to use some of the drops that are on the ground to whip up a pie and show you an easy way to do that, or my easiest way to do that. And we are gonna be working some horses today. It's a beautiful, sunshiny morning. Good morning. These chickens are some of the hardest working members of our farm. They're out from sunup till sundown finding things to eat, providing us with all the eggs we need. Jim has already been out and he has brought the horses in. Good morning, Mittens. And I come out in the morning and make sure everybody gets the water they need. And I also get everybody brushed. Good morning. How was your night? Ken was in last night, so he's probably gonna be the thirstiest, but we'll start with Baron and see if he's thirsty. Good morning, Barry. Since, since Barry can be a little bit of a hothead, I uh, usually take him out with a lead rope and he behaves pretty well. He might not even be thirsty. Nope. I'll be back, Barry. Kenny? Hi, honey. Barry. Oh, Barry, you must have done a lot of rolling. What do you think, Kenny? Well, I sure miss my granddaughters this week. If you missed the videos on our granddaughters being here, you should check them out. But um, this week, it's back to the uh, regular routine. And uh, since the horses were out, except for Ken last night, there's not a whole bunch of barn cleaning to do in here. And Jim does that with a skid steer. But anyways, I just kind of sweep everything up so that he can come through with a skid steer and clean it out if he wants to. Good morning, Jeannie. Are you going to help? How are you doing today, Kenny? How was your weekend? So you do a whole bunch of running around out there.
it's funny how unhungry everybody seems this morning because Bill and Ken have been outside and apparently there's still a lot of pasture out there because they are not that hungry this morning. They did have some grain, but um, I think they're pretty full. So I just asked Jim what he's up to this morning. Hi everybody. We'll see what that is. So what I'm doing is on my mowing machine, I have for quite a few years now actually gone without the spring on the evener. And the, there's a long bolt here that holds the evener on. And this spring is supposed to be in, on that long bolt on the back side. And I haven't had one, so I've just gone without it. <clears throat> and I've just uh, had a shorter bolt in there and double knotted, double knotted it on. And I don't know how many times the knots have shaken loose and fallen off now. And so the evener just goes flying with the horses. And uh, so I decided to take time and fix it. So I have, it's an old bolt from an old uh, evener set up. And uh, I got a new bolt, I hope, a new nut to go on here. And there's a hole in the end of the bolt so I can put a pin in it so it won't come apart. So that's what I'm doing right now. You look like you banged up your finger already this morning. Yeah. Long ways from my heart. Well, I think on my way back into the house, I'll pick up some apples. I think I'm going to, I have two trees here right close together. They both have different kinds of apples. I don't know what kind they are. When we first moved here, a kind friend of ours gave us three apple trees. Actually, I think he gave us four. One died. But that's what we have here. And they're different kinds. I should have kept the labels, but didn't. Anyways, uh, they aren't, for years we didn't get any apples off of them. They're standard size trees, they're not dwarfs. So it took a long time, but now we get more apples than we need from these trees almost every year. And this year is just a real bumper crop of apples. So I'll just pick up a few and we'll head on in and see if we can't make some apple pie for Jim. I like to pick ones off the ground because I know that they are probably getting on the ripe side. Plus, when they fall off the tree, they might get bruised and they won't keep as well. So, and I have to mow the lawn. And this is a big job in the fall when the apples come down and I have to pick the apples up before I mow the lawn. Norm, you gonna help me? <laughs> I got another helper. These apples over here are smaller this year because I should have probably taken some off of the tree, but they are a sweeter apple. So I'm going to mix them up. If you have less sweet apples, you can always add a little more sugar or sweetener. Well, that sure is more than enough. I'll probably make up a bowl of applesauce, too, very soon. There's nothing like fresh applesauce. Okay, everybody. Well, I'm in my kitchen, and I thought I'd take you along with me today to show you how I make an apple pie. I make them a couple different ways, but today I'm going to show you my easiest pie crust to make because sometimes people are intimidated by making a pie crust or think it's a big
process, but I'll just show you an easy pie crust you can actually make right in your pie plate, and um, we will go from there. So I've got my pie plate, and the ingredients for this pie are one and a half cups of flour, One and a half um, tablespoons of sugar. Guys, I'm not a very exact baker. Sometimes I guess uh, I'm not a real exact person, but I'll just show you how I do it. I've got, and some salt, a teaspoon of salt. I mix them up together in the plate. And then it calls for a half a cup of oil. And I've used all different things. I've used butter. Well, actually, I like butter best, but I happen to have olive oil today. I don't think it gives quite as good of a flavor, but you know, Jim just never complains and it's, and it's fine. It works out great. And then just two, two teaspoons of milk. And I kind of just incorporate it all with a spoon and then I mix it by hand and then I press it into place. And voila, you have a pie crust. I like this pie crust because, uh, like I said, it's quick. Uh, you don't have to roll it out. And um, it's just a one pan kind of deal. A lot of people are intimidated by making pie or making yeah making pie crust but um, this is one way that you could at least start I do make a you know I may I roll out pie crust too but this is one that you can do fairly quickly and easily and I do this when I'm planning on putting a crumb topping on my pie. Sometimes I make a double crust pie, so there's a crust on the bottom and a crust on the top. I make this pie crust when, um, when I'm making a crumb topping, which is something else I'll show you. There's a lot of different ways to make a pie. And um, the, the double crust where you roll it out, that just takes a little more time and effort and whatnot. This one doesn't take long at all. Uh, I also wanted to say sometimes I use melted butter instead of oil and I'm a, bi I'm a big butter fan but I'm a little low on butter today. And this oil seems to be working out nicely today. I just like the flavor of butter and I feel like butter makes a little bit harder of a pie crust, which actually comes in handy sometimes, depending on what kind of pie you're making. So, here we have it. In a matter of a few minutes, we've got a crust. I, you can um, finish it off however you want. I was taught as a young person by, by my mom to just pinch the sides, but you can make it more fancy and do it however you like to do. So now we've got the pie shell. 
You can also, if you were making, say, a um, cream pie, you could just bake the crust at this point, but um, I'm going to put the apples right in here. Okay, so here's the apples that I picked. I put it in my sink and just I'm going to just rinse them off. I'm going to peel them. Uh, the thing that's quite un unexact about the way I make pies is that I just kind of guess by about how many apples to use. I just guess what will fit nicely in the pie plate and so that it kind of overflows a little bit, but not too much. And that's how many apples I use. <laughs> so I just need to peel all these apples and then cut them up and put them into the pie. So as I said, earlier I am going to use a mixture of the two apples I love this kind of peeler that's the kind I grew up using and to me I can peel the fastest with those as with anything there's a lot of newfangled ones but I just like my old-fashioned peeler and sometimes I I think it's a little bit hard to find them but that's what I like to do I was given a peeler from someone and uh, the ones that that cranks and takes off the peel and they are pretty cool but your apples need to be fairly uniform to use it so I don't use it that often. The peels go into my compost and I'll take them out. They'll be incorporated back into the soil eventually. Okay, so I have 12 apples here, but if you were gonna buy them in the store or something, you'd probably wanna go with six or eight. I'm not even sure if this is gonna be the amount we need at this point, but now I'm going to cut them up and I wanted to show you the little um, thing I use to cut them up. This is handy dandy. It's got the core thing in the middle and then the sections around the edges. It helps cut them up real quick. The pieces are bigger than I like to have them because the uh, smaller you cut the pieces, the faster the pie will cook. but I'll show you what it looks like. It cuts it all up into pieces, these out of the way, so you can see. Now these apples may not be perfect when I uh, cut them up, but uh, I just take out the bad parts and actually, I usually cut these up into like two, two or three sections. It's still faster using that little, this thing, than cutting the core out of the apple. It just is so fast to get the core out of the apple. But then I cut the slices up smaller so the pie will cook more quickly. The reason I like to do that is because the crust doesn't get so overcooked that way. If you cut the pieces up smaller and the pie gets cooked, the apples get cooked faster, you don't have an overbaked pie crust. Got a little bit of a bruise to it. It really doesn't matter. I just take out any kind of yucky holes or anything like that. Okay, here's the apples all cut up in the bowl. Now I am going to add just a few ingredients and we will be ready to put it in our pie crust. One thing I wanted to say about the pie crust is that before you fill it, it's a good idea to just prick it with a fork that helps um, air bubbles 
to not wreak havoc and make the pie crust shrink and, and come out of place. Okay, so here are the simple ingredients that go into making an apple pie. Three quarters of a cup of sugar, and depending on if your apples are sweet or not, you might want to put a little bit more in. I think I might actually do just a teensy bit more because this is a lot. This is probably more than I should have for this pie. This is my cup measure, but just put three quarters of a cup of sugar. About a quarter cup of flour, and actually I'm being a little generous with my quarter cup. A pinch of salt, or so like um, maybe, I just usually pinch it, but like a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And a good heaping teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, sometimes if I have it, I put a little pinch of nutmeg in as well. But that is it. <clears throat> I'm going to mix it up with my handy dandy spoon here until it's all incorporated. Jim's out cutting firewood. You can probably hear him through the window. We have just started up our, um, our wood stove because we are drawing some kiln drying some lumber so he had to get that going and actually it's getting cool in the morning so having the stove going has been nice i love um, my radiators and it's so nice to have a little bit of heat for different things like rising bread or whatever because of the radiators it's just a nice even heat okay ready to go in the pie. This is going to probably be more than I need, but sometimes I really pack it in there. I think it'll fit. The one thing that <clears throat> this is a time when I could really have Jim or the kids in. Last week the grandkids ate a bunch of these. These apples are like really good when they're all coated with the stuff ready for apple pie. And they ate a bunch of apples just like this last week. This is like a full, full pie. But that's why a crumb crust comes in handy too sometimes. I'll just put some of the crumbs on top. I'm going to show you in a minute how to make them. When your pie is too full, sometimes you have to worry about stuff cooking over in your oven, and that's not good. Okay, are you ready for the crumb topping? It's pretty easy. It's three ingredients. It's a cup of flour. I'm using the same bowl so I don't even have to mess up another bowl. It's the same bowl that the apples were in. A half a cup of sugar. And then I have just a quarter cup of butter. And I cut it up into little chunks, but before I put it in there, I'm going to stir up the sugar and the flour to incorporate them together. And then I'm going to just stir the flour and the butter together so the butter gets all coated like. It just makes it easier to do the next step, which is to use a pastry blender or a fork and just Incorporate it to make the crumbs. And that's really all there is. And you know, literally, sometimes it's easier just to use your hands. And I'll probably end up doing that. Just so that I like to use um, butter that's 
still coolish because it crumbles better and you just make a you know just make a a crumb crumb topping with it and that's all there is to it you just mix it up as good as you like it if you're fussy and want a real fine I shouldn't say if you're fussy but if you like a real fine crust then just incorporate it better if you don't then don't I just like this whole pie because really honestly it just doesn't take that long to make this and just using the fewer dishes fewer bowls really not many ingredients I'm not saying it's super 100% great and healthy but it is real food what can we say okay so now I will just sprinkle this over top to be honest with you depending on what my mood is sometimes I put half the crumb topping on and leave half for another pie another time um, and normally this pie got a little crazy it's got a little too many apples but I think it'll be okay anyways as long as it doesn't cook over too much so anyways that's just a little bit of the sweetness on top and it kind of absorbs some of the liquid from the apples makes it taste good and what I do is um, I have a pie pie crust shield that I use to put on the edges of the pie crust so it doesn't get so dark so I'll show you that it's just this little aluminum baby you put it on the edges and uh, this pie is ready for the oven okay I've preheated the oven to 425 degrees I put the pie crust the pie in there for about 15 or 20 minutes at that temperature and then I decrease it to 350 degrees for some reason with fruit pies I've always seen that in a lot of recipes that you should start out with a higher temperature just to get things cooking I guess and that's what I always do Okay, let's see how this pie is coming along. It's been in the oven for 15 minutes at 425 degrees, and the top is already getting brown. I'm turning the oven down, or it's been turned down to 350, and we'll let it cook some more. <clears throat> and here's the finished product. As you can see, I put some tin foil underneath it because it dripped over. It was too juicy. The way that I test to see if it's done is by inserting a fork into it at different places to see and just just to see if the apples are soft and that's how I tell whether it's done. I don't put it on a certain in a in a certain amount of time. it is quite juicy around the edges still but after it cools that stuff sort of solidifies and um, it really turned out quite good well it's turned out to be a sunny warm afternoon and Jim's out in the hayfield Raking with Baron and Bill, the B team. What he is raking is a little patch of first cut hay.
He mowed it the other day in the rain. He knew he had a good stretch of weather coming and um, but it was on a it was on Saturday and this is Monday and he was gonna let it sit on Sunday and he just wanted to make sure the hay got down because he knew it was gonna be nice weather on Sunday. So it was pretty much dry standing. You just got to get the dew and wetness off of it and we'll bale it up later today. Tricky little corner there. Well, thanks for coming along with us today. I hope you enjoyed the video.